Positioning of the head is the key component of placing the trampoline platysmoplasty in the neck-defining suture. The neck needs to be extended fully to allow exposure of the area. As noted in these illustrations, it's important to place a towel underneath the shoulder blades or extend the head portion of the table. The markings are then performed initially for the placement of the neck-defining suture. Identification of the platysma bands as well as some mandibular glands with markings of the various anchor points and pivot points over the corresponding areas is essential to allow support underneath the jawline, especially at the back portion of the region. When placing the suture matrix, it's placed in a sequential fashion from 1 to 2 to 3, the left side anchor point, underneath the jawline to 4, 5, 6, and 7, the right side anchor point, underneath the jawline to 8, exiting through pivot point 1 underneath the cervicomental angle. This drawing illustrates the pathway of the suture as it will be placed with the suture rod and attached suture. After marking the various puncture points, Using the puncture tool is essential to make the 1mm insertion sites underneath the chin. The device is inserted and then rotated to the right and to the left to allow piercing of the puncture site and complete opening of the dermis. The device is designed in such a way that the tip is sharp and the edges beyond the tip back towards the device are blunt to allow dilation of each puncture site. The clearing tool is then brought to the field and is used to clear all the dermal attachments around each puncture site. It is designed in a way that allows rotation in a clockwise manner. Each puncture site should be entered into with the clearing device, with rotation of the device approximately two to three times clockwise. This allows the clearing away of dermal attachments so that the suture rod can be easily inserted, pivoted, and transferred underneath the jawline. Care must be taken to keep the clearing device just in the subcutaneous space away from underlying nerves and blood vessels and other vital structures. The suture rod is then brought to the surgical field and is inserted into the working end of the light handle. As noted, the end of the rod is illuminated and the rod, as it is transferred underneath the dermis, exhibits a nice, amber-yellow light. This confirms placement of the tip in the proper space. If the light is dull red, or if the light fades away, this gives feedback to the surgeon that the rod is passing too deeply. The rod should then be pulled back and redirected in a more superficial plane. Passing the rod too deeply could cause injury to underlying nerves, blood vessels, and other critical structures. The rod is carefully transferred underneath the skin from point 1 to point 2 and out of point 3. The rod is then brought out and rotated with the engagement and encircling of ligamentous attachments underneath the skin. The rod is then redirected to point number 4, where the rod is carefully advanced, brought out, and the tip is carefully rotated in the subcutaneous space. It is important to leave the tip inside the space to avoid the creation of a false passage. This sequence is carried out throughout the entire sequencing from point 1 to point 9, until the suture swings back around the right ear and then exits through point number 1 or point number 9, which is the same insertion site. It is important to pull the suture out to length, so that the suture only has approximately 6 inches exiting from the initial insertion site. If one does not advance the suture throughout the placement of the sequence the suture, because of its braided nature, may lock into place, and therefore, it will not allow the surgeon to utilize the complete length of the 100-inch suture segment attached to the suture rod. Mirroring anchor point 3, the rod is brought out through point number 7. Point number 7, just like point number 3, is an anchor point behind the ear just overlying the mastoid fascia, which has a very dense anatomy of ligamentous attachments. This allows firm anchoring of the suture system. The system is then brought out through point 8, the rod will be pivoted in the subcutaneous space and then will be advanced to point number 9. This corresponds to point number 1, which is the original insertion side of the suture. Once the rod is brought out through point number 1 or point number 9, the two suture ends are brought together and a hemostatic clamp is placed on them. The suture ends are then cut with a scalpel and again secured to a hemostatic clamp. 